Welcome back, everybody. This is Mr. Brain, your friendly neighborhood gaming dad, here with another Hero Breakdown video. And maybe you've already caught my first Hero Breakdown of the new set of Infantry Commanders, but this one will be about the second one. And that is Robert, the King of Rock, who, as people have correctly named him, a love child between Freddie Mercury and Elvis Presley. That being said, we're going to go through his skills, different ways you can use him in combat, a good talent tree build for him, and different pairs that I believe you can use to get the most out of him. Now, take this with a grain of salt. We don't actually have this commander yet. We haven't tested out all of his skills. We don't know what exactly is going to work well with him. So, if something significant changes about this analysis that I feel warrants an update, I will make it. That being said, let's get into it. Skill number one deals damage to target 12,500 and reduces the target's HP by 25%. I feel like this is familiar. Huh. It's a slightly weaker version. Higher HP reduction. No counter damage reduction. Hmm. Not starting off strong there, Robert. Skill number two. Increases infantry squad attack by 20%. You're really not starting well, Robert. While it's infantry squad attack, a 20% buff is pretty paltry considering that's its lowest stat. However, the second part of this is very intriguing. 16% of the damage absorbed by the shield will be deflected and dealt to the enemy. Now, the shield is confusing. Is it just any shield he makes? Any shield anyone makes? Could the garrison shield be included in this? Because the gar garrison talent tree does make a shield. Where does this come from? If we assume that it's from every shield, that means even Rigoro's insanely powerful shield will get that deflected damage bonus, which is really nice. However, if it's limited to just Robert's shield, that is very underwhelming. Because here's his shield factor. When using basic attacks, there's a 20% chance to grant a shield to oneself and allied squad for 2400. It's not a lot. It's also on a timer. So yes, this can happen in the middle of combat, have a nice little shield factor, and if this skill is affected by this shield factor as well as any of the other active skill shields, that would be great. But that'll be entirely dependent on what the shield means. So, we shall see. Skill number four. Counterattacks have a 20% chance to burn the enemy for three seconds, dealing damage every second of, for a total of 3,600 damage factor. This effect can only be triggered once in six seconds per target. That's the first time I've seen this. But make note. Infantry plans to be swarmed. They plan to be attacked by multiple enemies at some point. The fact that this has a separate timer for every single target that's attacking it is significant because they can get that 3,600 damage to be affecting, I believe the maximum right now is 10 surrounding you. It's between 8 and 10. I've seen as high as a 9% increase to damage due to flanking. So that's where I'm getting the 10 from. So someone correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But even if it's only 8, that's 8 people taking 3,600 damage factor total every 7 to 9 seconds based on that 20% chance. That could be pretty significant if you're being swarmed. And if you're not being swarmed, it's not going to be as effective. So I see a decent arena commander if you can be the one being swarmed 
However, he's lacking in other defensive capabilities other than that paltry shield. Awakened. Increases burn damage dealt to squads inflicted with HP reduction by an additional 50%. Now, two things I want to note. Someone has already asked this question. There are other kinds of burn damage. Well, I say other kinds. There's one other kind that I know of. And that is Hank. Hank deals burn damage. Does this affect Hank's burn damage? Based on how it's written? Yes. Yes, it does. Increases burn damage dealt to squads inflicted with HP reduction by an additional 50%. So, that effectively multiplies all of Hank's damage by... 1.5. Well, all of his burn damage by 1.5. Does that make Hank viable? Absolutely not. But if they add in other burn damage commanders later, keep track of that. And the HP reduction can come from anywhere. I know there's other commanders that reduce HP. We kind of pointed to one earlier. So, yeah, I'm seeing counter rally or double rally potential with that. I don't think it's going to happen as often as I would like, but it's there. And, of course, there's also everyone's favorite good boy, Lee, who includes HP reduction in his debuff. So... All in all, the skills are kind of underwhelming when you look at them. I don't exactly know what they were trying to go for here. It seems like if I had originally looked at this commander as if they were going to be a support character before they were released. Because based on the names, I was seeing a barbarian and a bard. And... Yeah, he's got a bit of damage. He's got some debuffs for the team. He's got a shield for his team. He boosts his own attack a little bit. He just dabbles into way too much to be effective at to, to be truly effective at anything. So, I will be interested to see how he can be manipulated to turn out better. As far as what you'll see in the field, He's. they intended for him to be a pair for Eddie in rallies. And if that's the case, that leads me to believe that this shield effect includes all shields. So I see some open field potential. I see some rally potential. Very low potential. I don't see too much good coming from this commander. He's not a garrison commander. Please don't. There's not enough going for him defensively to be able to be used as a garrison commander. Yes, the shield deflection damage is nice. Yes, he has some counterattack damage in the form of burn damage. He can't hold up to a rally. So, we have an infantry commander that cannot touch a garrison in my opinion can't do it that being said he has the infantry squad tree and the skills tree we have another commander with similar skills so let's take a look at talent builds personally i don't see him leading anything so and because he's got multiple forms of skill damage I would focus on maxing out the skill tree to get that rage, the additional skill damage, and any other buffs to skill damage that you can get. After that, definitely get up here to infantry guard. Get that reduction in damage taken when running infantry squads. Um, you can take out these four points and put them in squad defense uh, when remaining squad size 50%. I wouldn't advise that simply because if he's used in the open field, 
you're not going to get him below 50% very often. And this can crank out a little bit more damage. Increases squad skill damage by 1.5%, but skill damage taken increases by 1.5%. He's not dealing enough skill damage to compensate. Don't pick this skill up. If it was an AoE commander, sure. He's not doing enough damage to compensate for taking more damage. Honestly, this tree is probably what I would pick for him. You could also pick up a little bit more travel speed or some of the other squad attack buffs that you can get uh, that you can get down here. But honestly, this is pretty close to what his talent tree is going to be built as if you even run him as a lead commander anyway. That being said, who are you going to pair him with? Honestly, if this skill works out to their advantage, I'm going to be interested to, interested to see how well a Rigoro Robert would work. This is a pretty decent sized shield. If you can run this to the point where you're absorbing the entire shield's worth of damage and deflecting 16% of it, it makes Rigoro's shield that much deadlier. That, and when the shield is activated, Rigoro gets a damage increase. Does that affect it? Plus, you've got Rigoro's shield, you've got Robert's shield, you've got damage increases when the shields are, are in effect. You've got an option for an open field team here. I don't know if this trumps some of the other open field Rigoro options, but it's a thought. Again, you also have running in with Eddie and taking advantage of the stacked shields and this absolutely broken awaken skill on Eddie. Like, I'm kind of upset that Eddie is the top commander reward and not a roulette reward because it's going to limit how many people can get him awakened. If you've seen my video on him already, you'll. I've gone through all of Eddie. He's going to be great. You could pair Robert with Eddie to try and get some more shield damage out of him and get a nice infantry squad attack, but I don't think he's the best pair for him. Honestly, if you ask me, if you can, if you get him out of Lucky Roulette, great. You could probably find a use for him. If you're an infantry main, yeah, he's going to round out probably a fourth or a fifth team for you. If you're not a spender or you're just moderately spending in this, I wouldn't put too much investment in Robert. I don't see it happening. He strikes me as a weaker version of Jonathan, and Jonathan wasn't that impressive to anybody either. He's got the piece of shit general tree. He's got two decent talent trees, but can't really make use of them because his of his single target skill damage and not a lot of great buffs for it. Like I said, he dabbles in too much to truly be good at anything. But we're going to run tests on him. When we get him out in the field, we'll see how well he does. And if something changes, I will be happy to remake this video. I want to be proven wrong on this infantry commander. But with that being said, that's really all I have to say about him. If you have any questions or content ideas or believe I'm absolutely wrong on this, please let me know in the comments. Tell me why. I want to know. I want to have faith in infantry commanders. He's not my faith. Anyways, this is Mr. Brain, your friendly neighborhood gaming dad, signing off.